welcome to the Gothic Unicorn. Today we're going to make an item just because I want to. Now this is going probably going to end up in my doll's house. I am quite sure that at some point I will find a home for it but at the moment I don't know where. But it's one of those things. I just saw it and I've just got to make it. Now, because I want my house to have a generally spooky aesthetic and I don't want it to be too stereotypically Halloween, every now and again I will go onto Google and I will do a search for spooky decor, gothic decor, some kind of search along those lines and this is what I did and I found an image of something that I just had to make. Now this something is a bat shelf. Now as I say I don't know where it's going to go but I just had to make it so let's get on with it. My primary material today is going to be some um, paperboard. This is the kind of card that food packaging is made out of. Paperboard is what I know that um, is referred to in the United States. We just took, call it a cardboard box, but this is a cereal box. The good old cereal box, which in our house is known as the builder's merchants. When a cereal box is empty, it's given to me because it's building materials. So that's what I'm going to use. Nothing more complicated than that. Quite a bit of it because I'm going to have to build things up in layers but that's what I'm going to use. And I'm also going to use a um, die. This is a die that I've had for quite some time and I really like it. I like the bats. The smaller one is about an inch and a quarter and that one is about two and a half inches from wingtip to wingtip. I think I'm going to go with the big one today because I do want this piece to actually um, have some impact but I could use a smaller one in a different um, room setting. So I'm going to use this but you could use a bat template off the internet. They're out there, you can get them, you can print it out, obviously reduce it down to the size that you want. I like to just open the picture in Word if I can and then just set the size and um, give it a go. And obviously then you'd make it, you'd print out your template, maybe stick it onto some board so it was a bit um, more durable and then just draw around it and cut them out. I'm doing this. It probably isn't actually any um, quicker because I'm going to have to put this through numerous times. I'm thinking probably six or seven to get the thickness that I want. Obviously if you've got something like a Cricut, um, you know, an electronic die cutter, I'm sure it's possible to find a bat and um, cut them all out at once. That's outside my realms of expertise though, so I'm going to stick with this. So I'm going to get my trusty die cutter out and get cutting. My bats are cut and I went with seven and as you can see I've got six that are all fa that are all um, what I call right side up. It's actually the inside, it's the wrong side but it's the side I want. And then I've got one that is the other way. That's because I want the same finish on both sides. Just because it'll just make it easier to paint it all and even though that side would eventually go to the wall. I want it to all look the same and it just makes sure that when you stick them together you can um, line it up properly. I think this die is pretty much symmetrical but just in case it isn't if you cut one the other way you can match them up nicer. So the first thing I've got to do now I've got my bats is to glue them together and I'm going to be using my usual Cosmic Shimmer acrylic glue 
because it's what I like using and I'm going to stack them up and glue them. And then I'm going to have to leave it to dry for quite a while because um, I want the glue to be well and truly set before I start trying to arrange where I'm going to put my shelf. So I'm just going to put some glue onto one of these. I've made a decision. It's you. And I'm going to spread it a bit with my cocktail stick. You don't need much of this glue just to try and make sure that it goes into all the um, edges. You can do this with pretty much any glue, not hot glue obviously because you don't want a glue that is too um, thick. And I'm going to pinch it together. And I don't think I've got enough glue down there. So I'm going to repeat this until I've got all seven stacked up and then um, I'm going to pin them with some um, clothes pins, some clothes pegs. They make great um, little clamps for these sort of things. I do when they want to work properly. Clamp them and leave them to dry. So that's what I'm going to do. I just thought I'd give you a glimpse of the um, piled up bats. Now these seven layers um, is about four millimetres thick when it's all stuck together and pressed together, which is about five thirty seconds of an inch. Um, I'm just sort of doing this by eye, I'm not doing this by any real thickness, but I figure I want a reasonable depth to be able to get a reasonable depth of shelf on top of it, because this is going to be the bracket for my shelf. So I'm going to put my final peg onto the middle and I'm going to set this aside and then while this is drying it's obviously time to look at shelf material because I'm obviously going to have to stick several layers together for that as well so I'd better get that sorted now. For my shelf I have gone with a piece that is three quarters of an inch um, wide and two and three quarter inches in length. I went with this so that the shelf will actually um, come out a little bit longer than the wings on both sides and so that it's deep enough to actually put something on but it's not too deep that it looks wrong on that size of bracket that I've made. Um, I may mess with the bracket a little bit once I stick it together but um, I think this is the size that the finished piece is going to be. Now I've glued together four pieces of the um, cereal box card at that size and I'm now just going to pin them again and um, put this aside to dry. Now I'm going to give this quite a while to cure because obviously I want it to be properly dry and when it has dried I'm also going to go around the edges with some more glue to smooth out any imperfections from the um, laminating that I've done. Um, and I'm going to do that with the um, bracket as well. So I'll just put um, a good coat of my glue around the edge, smooth it out and let that dry as well. And then once that is all done, dried and everything, we'll come back and we'll look at um, putting it together and um, finishing it. The glue is all set on both pieces and I've actually added a little modification to my bat. On the back I have put three little piles of um, more board. This is another seven layers. It just means that when the entire shelf is put together, the bat is not going to be right up against the wall. It will stick out a bit so it'll be a bit more noticeable, I hope. Now, with that done, before I stick the shelf to the bat, I'm going to paint it all. I'm going to start off by painting it just in ordinary um, black acrylic craft paint. I may 
go with the metallic black on top which isn't really that much of a metallic colour you know it's not really shiny or I might just go with a coat of some Mod Podge to give it a bit more um, texture I'm going to see um, what I feel like once I've actually painted it black so next step is painting it black as I say normal acrylic paint the stuff I always use and um, we'll get that put on so the painting's done and so really is the back shelf I gave this two coats of my black acrylic craft paint and then a thin coat of the black metallic which to be fair isn't really that obvious now that it's been mod podged I used my matte mod podge over the top and I actually um, stuck this together before I put the Mod Podge on. Now I did that just so that I could um, ensure that it looked as clean as possible. I did that really easily. I lined up the um, shelf on one of the lines of my mat and then putting some glue on the eye points of the wings I slid the bat into place and then pushed it together. This allowed me to eyeball where I wanted the bat to go and I think it's more or less even. It may be about a millimetre over to the one side compared to the other but it's pretty good and I'm really pleased with how this has come out. This looks like something that would fit in perfectly in any room of my doll's house. So, yeah, from seeing a picture on the internet, I've been able to make a really quite straightforward um, bat shelf. With the shelf finished, I could leave this video here, but I figured I need something to put on that shelf. And it offered me an opportunity to try something that I've been considering for a while and that is printable minis. Now I've bought this file from Easy Print and Cut on Etsy. This is a quite basic taxidermy bat. It's a bat in a box and what you do is you'd um, print it out cut it out and make the box and there's your piece. Now obviously that'd be far too simple. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and make it a bit more dimensional and see if we can't actually um, improve upon their piece here. So what I did was I took the file which comes to you as a JPEG and a PDF and I arranged six onto a piece of my 160 GSM cardstock. This is about the heaviest weight that um, will go through my printer ordinarily and I find it sufficient for most of my miniature needs because it's not too thick and it folds fairly well so um, yeah. So I've printed out multiples of that, in this case six and I've cut one out. Now this I've cut out with my knife and a steel ruler and one thing I want to um, stress when you are um, folding anything you don't make your scoring line on the side that you're folding in so if you think about it, we always used to talk in card making of, as um, peaks and valleys. Because obviously when you fold it, you get a peak and you get a valley. You don't score the valley, you score the peak. Because that's where the pressure is going to be on the um, fibres of the um, material. So what I've done is I've cut this out and I've scored it. I haven't folded them all yet because I wanted it still to be fairly plat flat fairly flat to show you and I am going to finish folding these 
can see because I've scored everything it should be fairly straightforward apart from that one now what you will notice is because I've got stretching on the outside I'm going to have to go around with a marker and just colour in the edges it's not a problem I found a marker that I think is um, enough of a match that it'll just look like a worn head worn edge once I've finished so I'm going to get some glue and I'm going to stick this little box together and I'm going to show you how I'm going to try and make it a little bit more detailed than the original so is my little um, printable all made up it makes a reasonable little piece that would be fine on the shelf but I wanted to try and make it a little bit more now I've been round it with my pen there are a couple of places where I might need to touch it up again but I'm going to wait until I've glued it I'm going to start off with another bat I've actually cut a bat out and I've got him here ready coated in glue and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick bat number one over the top of the base bat all that this does is it adds a little bit of extra dimension of course that wing hasn't gone quite straight that's fine now you could add more than one bat if you wanted but I think that that will be enough for what I want to do it just lifts it up and adds to the effect of shadow that is already in place on the box to further add dimension to the um, piece I have cut out um, four of the frames now when you're cutting out a frame I recommend that you cut out the inside first but don't remove it just leave a little bit in the corners and you can um, go back once you've cut the outside out and just nick them off um, as simple as that now one of them I have used some clear tape um, which I've stuck on both sides so that there's no sticky to catch anything um, to replicate a bit of glass um, and I've been around all of them with my marker now what I would recommend is that if you're going to use the marker you use it from the um, back side the unprinted side the wrong side whatever you like to call it so that if it slips it just goes onto the unprinted side and you don't ruin your actual piece always a good piece of advice that is ask me how I know I've done it far too many times so what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to layer them up I'm going to put two straight onto the box then I'm going to put the um, glazed piece and I'm going to put that one on the top and I will be back in a moment once I've done that. I've almost done with layering up my pieces but I just wanted to show you what I found to be the easiest way to do this and that is to um, dab the glue on with a cocktail stick around where the frame's got to go and then to pick up the, co the cocktail stick, no, pick up the frame and put the frame onto the glue. Now I've actually let this glue sit there for a few minutes because it is um, my um, my acrylic glue that goes really nice and um, tacky. Now I've got a bit much on there so I'll get another cocktail stick and I will um, just tidy this up a bit and although this is now onto the um, the faux glass. I'm not too bothered by it because if it does look like there's something there, I can add a little bit of chalk and make it look like there's some dirt built up in the corners. So I'm going to let that finish drying and check if it needs any more touching up and then we'll look at the final piece. And here we have it, my finished um, dimensionalised taxidermy bat. Now, I don't know how well you can see because of the um, glass but you can actually tell in real life that it's away from 
the background piece. You could make a nice little um, polymer clay bat or something like that and put it into a box. But I think that this, for something that's going to probably be in the back of a room, is um, quite acceptable. And for the cost, it cost me less than um, less than two pounds. Actually, I think it was less than one pound fifty for a printable file that I can use repeatedly. You know, it's acceptable. Um, so don't rule out these um, people that sell printables. There's some of them that are very, um, very handy for these more unusual doll houses. And there we have my bat on a bat shelf. I'm really pleased with how these have come out. Um, as I say, I don't know where they're going, but I'm going to find them a home. They are definitely going in my doll's house. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe. And apologies for any um, sniffles that you might have picked up on during it. But um, while I've been making this, I've actually developed a cold. It is just a cold, but it's getting on my nerves now. So, until next time, bye.